My name's Nebraska and I'm a hair and makeup artist. Um, a little bit about my job. Uh, I basically do a range of things. I work with musicians, I do commercials, I do editorials, uh, I do private, I teach a little bit. So I do a complete range, I do TV as well. So I work with a lot of brands. So I've worked with L'Oreal Paris, I've worked with L'Oreal Professional, I've worked with Maybelline, Kerastas, uh, Shiomura, Redkin. I then also work with quite a few celebrities. Probably the most famous is Prince William, which was an absolute honor to do him, uh, for an editorial for uh, Attitude magazine. I also work with a range of musicians. I look after an artist called Little Sim. Uh, I recently worked with Leanne Le Havis. I've worked with Jesse J, Dion Bromfield, uh, Wretch32, lots of different artists. So how I got into the industry, um, basically I was at uni, I did something completely different. So it was only when I left um, and I basically went privately and I found a school that uh, did it. And that's how I then went into it. And at the time I did realize that there were colleges that did it, but because I had already gone through the uni and process, I didn't want to then go to college for a few years. Um, so that's why I went the route I did. However, nowadays you, you have so many options. You're so lucky at this point where there are so many different options that you can do. There are colleges, there are a ton of different courses that will help you get to where you need to get to a lot quicker than the route I did. So key skills you need as a hair and makeup artist. So obviously you've got the obvious ones, which is actually being a good hair and makeup artist, but there are so many other skills that you need. Um, communication is so key. Um, you're part of a team. So teamwork is such a key thing. Um, we have something called set etiquette. So when you are on set, there are certain ways that people behave and things that you should be doing. Um, so for example, don't be on your phone the whole time when you're on set. It looks so unprofessional and professionalism is what you want to give them because no one wants to work with someone that's not professional, um, even if you're amazing at your job. So I've had assistants come in and they'll be on their phone and I'm like, don't do that. It makes you look bad and it makes me not think that I, I could work with you again. Um, so that's important. The other thing I would say is time management absolutely key you are the first person that when you're on set that usually the person comes to so the model or the artist or the actor or whoever it is you are the first person that they are going to come to so if you're late it's terrible it will be awful because then it has a trickle effect and that trickle effect will affect the whole shoot and that will be blamed on you so what kind of hours the makeup artists work all sorts of hours. Um, it really does depend on the job. So for example, something like a music video can be 12 to 14 to 16 hour days. But then something like an interview, you could be there for a couple of hours, do the makeup, and then you're gone. Um, so it really, really, really does depend on the job. We work weekends, we work evenings, we work days. It depends very much on what it's for. So sometimes with a red carpet, you're expected to stay in case they need touch-ups throughout, or sometimes you just do the makeup and then you leave. So when I'm doing different jobs, um, you know, as makeup artists, we're creative. So it's really important to get inspiration from lots of different places. So um, Instagram is great for this. Social media is amazing for this. Pinterest is amazing for this. And you could just do really simple things like when you're doing a job, they give you a mood board and they'll say to you, oh, we kind of want this sort of look. And then it's up to you to kind of further develop that. There's so many talented hair and makeup artists out there that you can just have a little Google, have a little search and get some inspiration from them. There's also a really good website is called Model Mayhem. And that's a site that once you are working as a makeup artist or even when you're starting out as a makeup artist, you put yourself on there and basically there are models, there are photographers on there and there are makeup artists and you basically do something called TFP, which is testing for prints. So that's a really good way of building up your portfolio. So everyone does it for free because everyone wants to get 
images. Um, so once you build yourself a social media site, then you can actually have something on there which showcases your work. Really important to look at trends, for example, because as with clothes, as we know with fashion, there are trends of the season. The same goes for makeup. So it will either be dewy skin or it will be eyeliner or it will be a bold lip or whatever it is. So what advice can I give you? Um, when you're starting as a makeup artist, essentially what you first want to start doing is building up a portfolio. Um, and this is where I say, you know, what, we're very fortunate. We have, most of us have good phones, which have amazing cameras. So you don't even need to get a professional camera anymore. So grab your mum, grab your friends, grab your sister, grab your aunt, do the makeup on them, take some nice photos, make sure you do it in really nice lighting. So if you don't have a ring light or anything like that, get nice natural light, get some really nice pictures that showcase the makeup, build a social media page, build an Instagram page. If you can't afford to do the website, although there are so many places that offer free websites as well, so you can start doing that. Go on Instagram and get yourself a nice page. Start putting pictures on there just to showcase your work. Once you've built yourself a portfolio, you can then start putting yourself out there and offering your services to makeup artists so that you can get some maybe assisting positions. So one thing I would say would be great is make sure that you email the person don't dm on instagram it looks a lot more professional if you've taken the time to find that person's website find their email address and email them just do a nice little opening just explain who you are what you want to do and put a link to your work a good way of starting out in the industry is to assist you gain a ton of experience being able to assist because you essentially learn from that person that you're assisting and it show and it will open the doors to you in terms of lots of different genres so whether it's tv whether it's musicians whether it's red carpets you get to experience it all so assisting is such a good and valuable way of the of, of of starting out So one of the key things I get asked is, so how do I build up a kit? So when you're starting out, you don't necessarily need to be spending a ton of money on building up a kit that, to be honest, you're not going to be using day in, day out. But what you want to do is you want to build a kit that's compact and that's functional. And the easiest and best way I would recommend doing this is using palettes. There are so many more brands now that do good quality palettes, but companies like Graftobi and Ben Nye even high street versions like revolution now do palette everything is palleted so when i started out you didn't have that in the high street but now you do and the great thing about palettes is they come in a range of shades so it will do every skin tone what you don't want to happen is get to a shoot and you have a model there and you're like i don't have the right color foundation for her or the right color concealer for her all the right blusher for her so palettes are an amazing way of doing that amazing way of building up your kit yes it's a little bit of an investment so buy it one at a time um, but it's definitely definitely worth it and long term it will be a much better option for you um, I would say a foundation palette highlighter palette I would say a concealer palette and I would say a corrector palette and the corrector palette will give you all the undertones another thing I would recommend is getting a flash palette a flash palette essentially has all the primary colors which means you can make any skin tone with that if you really need to as well as a few different shades which can basically play with lots of different creative looks So in terms of fee and what you should be getting paid, um, it really does vary. So you can be getting anything from 50 pounds all the way up to a thousand plus. A good place to get a better understanding of how much you should get paid is um, Beck2. Beck2 is basically the union for makeup artists, creatives, and basically they give you a rough estimate of what you should be getting in each industry. So whether it's TV, whether it's corporate, it will give you a rough idea. As you get more experience, your pay will rise with it. And the thing is, when you do start, you do think, if you did it for the money, don't. You have to love this job to do it because it's long hours, it's a lot of hard work, it's a lot, a lot of hard work. And especially initially, 
you are going to be hustling hard to get those jobs and but once you're there and once you get there and once you start building yourself up it will be worth it and then that's when you get the payoff financially anyways 